So, uh, how, how was your encounter with Jesus? Were you raised in a Christian family? No, actually not at all, because my father, the boxer, yeah. and was not at all religious, zero. And so, I actually, we had, he was... I don't know if I, if it's right to say best friends. We were such a good friendship together. When I was five, six, seven, awesome. eight, nine, ten, I was with him all the time. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So he would take me to the bars with him on the weekends. Okay. When I was six, seven, eight, nine, ten, because he just loved having me with me. And so I'm the only kid in the bar. You know, everybody oh else is 30, 40, 50. And he was pretty famous because of his big profile boxing. So when he would come in, they all were excited. You know, tell us about, tell us about this. And, yes. you know, and he boxed, you know, Madison Square Garden in the oh big places. And, really? Yeah, for, professionally for some years as well. And he knew everybody in the boxing world. And so he, he was always kind of the life of the party. So he'd bring me and I always grew up on his stories. And so when I'm 14 years old, I tell my dad, and again, we're great friends. I go, dad, I, I want to join a religion and he said and i knew nothing about religion zero okay. i mean i thought moses was a catholic priest i had i knew okay. nothing okay. about religion and he goes well that's wonderful he goes why i go well because when i sleep outside in the backyard in the summer i see the stars and i go there's got to be a god up there he goes there is there is he goes i don't know much about him but so he told me he goes if i was you i would either be jewish or catholic Okay. <laughs> and I said, okay. I go, why? And this is just barroom theology. I'm not saying this is okay. <laughs> theology. This is what he told me. He goes, well, the Jews, they're more successful. They have more money. He goes, But the Catholics are bigger. They have more power. Okay. <laughs> Worldwide. Okay. And I went, hmm. choose. <laughs> well, that was his view. <laughs> you know, there's all kinds of holes in his th some of his thinking. But So I decided to be a Jew. And so he okay. said, go study at the World Book Encyclopedia. So I gave him a report. I, I worked on it for a while. And he goes, go to the synagogue. He goes, walk straight in. I'm 14 years old. He said, remember, you're a champion, son. Look the guy right in the eye. Don't look down. Don't be ashamed. Say, my name is Mike Bickle. I'm 14 years old. I want to be a Jew. And I went to the synagogue and walked right up to the guy. Said, I'm 14 years old. I was scared to death. I want to be a Jew. And I'll just say it didn't work. It didn't so, work, right? No. <laughs> and so the next, I just said, well, I'll be a Catholic then. He said, well, that's good. Catholic's good. So I studied that a little bit. I mean, not much, but a little report. And went to the, he goes, go down to the Catholic church. I went there. And at the end of this service, I'd never seen this before. It was remarkable because it was very different than the Jewish congregation because they were serving refreshments at the end. These little crackers and some juice and stuff. Okay. So I, went, I was the last guy to come down and I said, hey, uh, I didn't know they did that. I thought it was really neat. I had no idea what it was about. <clears throat> and they had the, the big bowl of with the crackers in it and there was extra. Okay. And I'm the last guy, so I said, can I have a few extra? And he goes, no, no, it doesn't Just work that one. way. I go, well, I'm the last guy. <laughs> you know, and I was hungry. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. And so I went to the priest afterwards, and I said, sir, I want to be a Catholic. And he said, really? And so he, for nine months, he taught me about religion. And then a year after that, I got born again and came into a, a living relationship with the Lord like a year later after okay. that. Okay. And so for nine months, I met with this priest. And, but he didn't tell me normal Catholic things. He said, you know, God loves you. He just gave me pretty, I don't know what I mean by normal Catholic things. He just talked to me, God loves you, and you're special to him. He said things like that to me. Okay. Like he didn't tell me anything about Mary. I didn't, I didn't know anything, hardly. <laughs> what, does, what, what happened in this after nine months? Like what happens when after you nine encounter months, him? I, like... go, I go to the high school. Then Now I'm in high school because I was in junior high the, okay. the, before high school because I'm 14 and 15. Now I go to the high school, and my high, and we, we had the big high school in the area, a real big one. And, the, and we had a championship football team. Mm -hmm. And the head coach is almost the number one guy. I mean, second only to God in that school, you know. And so he came up to me as I'm a sophomore, you know. I'm only new at the school. He goes, Bickle. And I, yes, sir, yes, I'm scared. Because he's so big and the team yeah, is real yeah, yeah. successful and I'm real nervous. And he goes, he's a born-again believer. And he wants wow. to lead me to the Lord. But I don't know any really? of this. And he goes, uh, what? you want to come to my house for a Bible study? And I said, well, what's a Bible study? I don't know what that means. He goes, well, will you study the Bible? I go, I don't, 
okay, I don't, what do you do? He goes, well, just come. I go, I'm a Catholic. I've been a Catholic nine months, you know. Okay, okay. <laughs> but I'm a Catholic. <laughs> I go, I'm a Catholic. He goes, well, they, they, I go, do they do Bible studies? He goes, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, just come, just come. So he came, and it was in, then there was a sports camp, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, with all believers, professional athletes. He paid my way to it. And the world famous wow, football player awesome. from the Dallas Cowboys, his name's Roger Staubach. Young people today don't know his name, but he was MVP of the Super Bowl, super famous. He won the Super Bowl a number of times. He got up in front of 2,000 kids and t- said, I know Jesus, and told his story. And I'm only 15 now. And I went, I want what he has. So I went outside into the, you know, after the night meeting, I said, Jesus, if this is true, come into my heart. And I, he really touched me. The Lord did. So oh I came God. home and told my dad, and he wasn't that happy about me being born again. <laughs> that was a whole, because I went to the bars with him the next week and told the people about heaven and hell and born again. And my oh dad goes, my whoa, 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 whoa. Let's bring this down a notch. You know, at least give it a year or two. You've only been back a week. <laughs> but oh I was my. so excited. That's awesome. And, and, and I think that's so uh, powerful when you a lot of guys that I, I interview uh, in the podcast, they say about this one person that is like anonymous, you know, but it's, it was really important in their lives. For example, this... The high school this, football coach. Uh, man. A, a high school coach, girls, co- you know, whatever, soccer, football, basketball, whatever it is, that coach is so important to those students. Yeah. And coaches, women, men that love Jesus, you have... You have the most influence over that young heart. Yeah, that's so good. I mean, a school teacher would too, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But a coach or a music teacher, really, if you're really into music, that's true. You really look up to them. And-